Hello, Hello. Good, good morning, morning everybody. everybody. Happy, Happy Saturday. Saturday. Let, Let me make, make sure that, that I'm good, good to go, go here. here. Okay. Let me just, just get, get a quick, quick audio, audio check, check real quick, quick here on my end. All right. All right. Good, good morning, morning, everybody. everybody. Happy, Happy Saturday. Saturday. Welcome, Welcome to Romero, Romero Press Saturday, Saturday morning embroidery school. school. Today we have a very jam-packed informational session. session. All right, so, so let me just make sure I'm good here. here. If, if somebody, somebody could give me a thumbs, thumbs up, up if, if I'm, I'm good. good. Okay, okay, hold on. on. I'm good. All right, All right let me lower it. I had to refresh my iPad. iPad. All, right, All right, sounds, sounds like, like I'm good. good. All, All right, echoing, right, yeah, I just, I just lowered that volume, volume right now. now. All right, All right thank, thank you very much for uh, for, for the, the sound check. check. Okay, okay yeah, yep. echo. echo. Let, me let me see. Let me know, let me know if, it, if the echo's, echo's gone away. away. I, think I think it should, should be, be good now. now. All right, All right. right. We, got, we, got, we, got we got a jam-packed jam informational uh, session, session today. today. All right. So, so uh, good morning, Bevy. Bevy Jean. Good morning, Barb. Good morning, morning Jesse. All, All right. right. So, so we, we got, got uh, Ch 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 Chabina Dory. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Echo, echo still. Echo, echo still. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Still echo. echo. All, All right. right. Hold on. Give, Give me a sec. sec. Let, Let me see what's going on. on. Uh, Let me just make sure my. Let me make sure my audio is good. Stop. Bye. Okay, wait. Oh, uh, bam. Oh, all right. Mute that. All right. Now let me know if we're good. Somebody could give me a radio check. All right. Bam. Bam. Good morning, Grace. Gracie. All right. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Gracie. Better. All right. If I sound good, then we could get started. All right, all right. Welcome to week 10. So we've made it all the way to week 10 in the year. Okay. Youngster Clothing, good morning. All right, thank you for stopping by. Today, we got a jam-packed informational day today. All right, so we are on week 10. All right, so now we're kind of getting into the, into the uh, puff, puffy side of things. Okay, so the more, I would say, um, you can call it the more advanced type stuff. All right. All right, all right, let me just make sure we're good. All right, Barb, thank you, much better, yay. All right. All right, all right, we're, so, uh, we're, we're slowly uh, packing up the room right now, so I'm going to get started right now. All right, before we get started, um, let me see, I'm just going to start off with the question of the day, all right? I got a question of the day. The question of the day is, what is your favorite number? Okay, what is your favorite number? So I'm, I'm wearing my hat right here. So a Roman, a Roman numeral, it's uh, 24. All right, so one of my favorite numbers, of course, because of uh, Kobe Bryant, big Kobe Bryant fan. All right, so um, I got this one, All right, 24. All right, this kind of bases uh, the, Roman, the Roman numeral. I'm going to use today's training. Uh, based off kind of like a, a very basic Roman numeral uh, numbers from 1 through 100. Okay. Right, right, right. So let's go. Uh, let me just make sure we're good here. All right. So today, all right, uh, let me just give you a little background about uh, 3D Puff. Exactly what is 3D Puff? Okay. Uh, 3D Puff is really the reason why I got into embroidery. All right, I got into embroidery because I'm a big fan of just hats in general. So, um, of course, the the MLB, the Major League Baseball hats, okay, um, and all, you know everything that you find at lids, right? And you find at the mall. Okay, I've been buying hats for like the longest, and I've spent thousands and thousands of dollars on hats. Like, okay, so. Uh, Kind of like when I base my designs or even my quality of designs, I like to compare it to that level, like the level of lids and the stuff that you see at the mall and at the store, okay? 
So kind of uh, that that's always been my inspiration to the level of uh, quality that I want to reach is what you find uh, the Major League Baseball to be at. All right. Uh, so when I got into embroidery, actually, my first job, my first embroidery job was a 3D puff job hat. OK. Um, and when you're starting and you don't know kind of like the basics of 3D puff. All right. A small, simple, what can be a simple project ends up being like a big old nightmare. All right. So I learned very quick. All right. I learned very quick um, the do's and don'ts on 3D Puff. All right. So today we're going to go over a lot of those stuff. All right. We're going to go over uh, the minor details that you really don't think about. OK. And at times you having issues and you really don't know exactly where the issue uh, comes from. All right, so we're going to talk about a lot of that stuff. We're going to go into details, what to look out for. And even if you don't digitize your own, even though you don't uh, do your own digitizing, you still have to know the science behind 3D Puff. That way, if something's not going right, okay, you got to, you, 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 you have to know whether it's a machine problem, a digitizing problem, or a hooping problem. All right, so you got to know exactly what's happening. All right, so if you know like the, if you know the inner work, if you know the insides, so right here on the left side, I have like the, 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 the actual stitching of my hat that I'm wearing right now. All right. So this is what the final, what the final outcome looks like, right? Kind of, all right. Kind of looks like that. All right. But us as digitizers, all right. Uh, this is what we see, right? We see the inside, like we, we see the bones, the meat and potatoes of our designs. All right. So a lot of times when something's not going right, okay, we got to know the inside, the inside workings of 3D Puff, all right? So that's what I'm going to kind of go over today, all right? So uh, let's go. Let's see. Let's see. All right. Uh, good morning. Yep. Looks like we have a lot of good mornings today. We have a lot of favorite numbers, all right? So we got Barb, favorite number 17, Jesse, 17, all right, uh, 16. Uh, Beverly, 21. Yeah. Oh, number 10. That's one of my favorite numbers. Yeah. 14. Youngster. All right. 42. All right. All right. All right. right. Yep. So a lot of different numbers that we got here. All right. All right. We got a lot of good mornings. Bam, bam. Yep. This is one of my favorite numbers too. 13.1. Right. Half a marathon. All right. Cool. Cool. All right. Let's go ahead. Let's start with today's uh, training. So the rules, We're gonna, I'm going to go over 10 rules about 3d puff okay uh some of this stuff can be a little basic but we're gonna even try to dig deep into the basic stuff all right so even though it becomes basic we're gonna research and go into more information or more detail of a lot of terms that you've heard like a lot of times we hear uh certain terms we we hear about common practices but now we'll kind of talk about why we use those common practices all right so Let's go ahead. Let's start with, with rule number one. All right, let me take out this one. Let's start with rule number one in 3D Puff. Okay, 3D Puff. And that is choosing the right puff. Okay, so this is one that I learned uh, on my first project. All right, my first, uh, my first 3D Puff project. All right, I actually learned the hard way. Okay, because I've actually seen people. Okay. I've seen I've seen people on um, when I first did my uh, YouTube research, right? There's there's people out there that will tell you that you can use uh, Puff from Walmart, from Hobby Lobby. Okay, you've seen it over there, right? You've seen the the craft Puff, okay, which was one of the biggest mistakes I've ever did. All right, I have, uh, so that that stuff is very brittle. Okay, it's not, not really made for uh, embroidery type projects that's more like arts and craft type stuff so I would say um, even just when you're gathering your materials when you're working with 3d puff and you're gathering your materials okay uh, your 3d puff even though you don't see it, it it's kind of hidden at the end okay still plays a vital part because it's pretty much gonna hold your stitches okay you don't want it to break down especially uh, after wear and tear you don't want your 3D puff to break, okay? What I do want to share, all right? So so we'll eliminate going to Walmart, all right? 
worst case scenario, it's um, you 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 have a project due in two hours, and the only thing left is to go to Walmart and do it. Yeah, you could you can get yourself out of a out of a, a pickle, right? If you have to, right? It's still doable, but in the long run, it's it's not gonna hold up. All right. All right. What I do want to do, I want to share. I want to share a, a website where I where I go get my um, my 3D puff. Okay, so I would recommend, or I use three three two locations to, uh, or three to use uh, to buy puff. Right. So I got my um, Ganold. Right. Ganold has actually something that's called dense foam. Okay. So that's like the best foam that you could use for 3D puff. Okay. And then they also have the regular foam. Okay. And then I also use all stitch and all stitch is very popular, especially for, uh, anybody that doesn't have a, uh, an account with Ganold cause you got to create an account with Ganold, uh, in order to use Ganold. All right. But if you don't have a, an account, you don't have your paperwork situated, then you could go to, uh, all stitch also. Right. But I want to share with you the Ganold website right here. All right. Oh, uh, let me go ahead. Let me show you something cool right here. All right, so here we're on the Ganold website. All right, and then you could go to supplies and then it's uh, uh, 3D Puff, Pick Puff 3D Foam, okay? And then they, they got it broken down into two parts, all right? They have the Puffy Foam Classic and the Puffy Foam Dance, all right? Let's start with the Classic first, all right? And this information, you could actually go to every embroidery store like madeira and every other ones that they have they all have puff foam okay they also have a dense foam also okay so this kind of goes it, it could be uh it can be compatible with different websites all right this information all right so you go into the classic uh foam okay you go into the classic foam here and you'll see that there's different sizes all right you have three millimeters which is the most common uh, I, I use three millimeters. Okay. Uh, for all my pro I would say for 99% of all my projects, I use three millimeter. That's just kind of standard to use, but there are some jobs. Like if you want to get real creative, all right, there's some people out there that do very creative type puffy work. All right. They'll go up and they'll start, uh, using the six millimeter. All right. Or if you need something, uh, in between like a, uh, uh, a four millimeter i've seen people double up on the two millimeter okay so you have two millimeters or if you want to go a little a little smaller you could go two millimeters all right sometimes you don't need a a, a, a three millimeter you just want a little tiny right a little and you could tell the difference even though it's a millimeter of a difference you can still tell the difference all right even though it seems like uh three and two doesn't mean doesn't look like a lot okay Three and six millimeter is a big difference, all right? A big difference between the double of three, six, all right? And you've even seen people double up on six millimeters, all right? That's some super advanced stuff. You might have to adjust your uh, your embroidery machine if you get to that level, all right? And then here also, you have your assortment colors, all right? So this is another thing that I want to touch on, the assortment colors. Uh, Depending what color your design is, that's what color you want your foam to be. All right. So you got to make sure this one here, it's good to have because you never know when somebody uh, requests a design at a specific color and you have that color ready to go. All right. So uh, having this one, the assortment color is good to have in the back of your pocket, just in case for some random person to say, hey, I want a, uh, I want this thread. Okay. Worst case scenario. If you're working with a light thread, find a light. If you don't have the color foam, then go with a, a light version of your thread, right? Because there's going to be time you just don't have that color puff, okay? You're going to have to go for the close. For example, if if you have a, uh, if you have a, uh, like a reddish design, but you don't have red foam, you might get away with a pink, all right? Pink, all right? Or worst case scenario, a white. You can you can probably use a white foam instead of using a black foam. Okay, so kind of sometimes you might just have to go with the closest shade of color. All right, all right. So that's uh, with foam. Let me see if there was any other thing that I wanted to talk about by foam. All right. So the only thing to 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 know is that um, foam 
regular size, three millimeters. If you get three millimeters, you're good with that. And um, anything bigger, okay, once you start going into the six millimeter, you might have to adjust your machine, okay? There are newer machines, the more expensive type machines where, um, where the presser foot is just automatically adjusted. So if you do go with something thicker, your equipment could adjust for it, all right? So um, that's on that. And one last thing. Uh, well, we'll talk about that when, and one of the one of the other rules. All right, so let me go back here. Oh, let me show you the all stitch. So if you don't have an account with um, Ganold, okay. So all stitch also has a puff uh, 3D puff foam. Okay, so they got a bunch of colors here also. All right, so keep trying to get all these colors. All right, they got a bunch of colors, and then they also have different uh, thickness. So here on the left. You could um, you could choose a thickness. So they have the two, the three, and the six. All right, they have a two sticky back. All right, I've never used a two millimeter sticky back, but it might be a good idea just so you don't have to. Uh, um, usually, you could put a rubber band or you could put tape on the puff, so it could hold on. All right, so that's probably something that I'll I'll take a look at the sticky back. All right, all right, cool. So that's us. Uh, rule number one. Okay, so right now. We're just talking about um we're just kind of talking about getting your uh your materials situated all right so even though it might seem like something very basic something we don't have to really think about puff plays a big role all right so what i would suggest if you if you're gonna do this for like uh, client work okay like real serious type work then i would suggest the dense foam okay dense foam just holds on clean and when you take off the the 3d foam it actually, t it, it, it comes off a little easier and cleaner. So there's less cleanup, okay? All right, so let me see. Uh, let me just make sure if we have any questions right here. All right, uh, Barb has a question. Have you tried 3D Puff stuff from John Deere? There is an extra step because it is water soaked. Uh, no, I just used 3D Puff uh, from Ganold or uh, Allstitch. So I didn't know he sells 3D Puff. All right. Um, bam, bam. If you have any questions, just you can put a cue in front of it, and and then I know you get one. All right. Cool. Cool. All right. So, looks like we have a uh, jam packed uh, house today. Okay. So we got a lot of good mornings. Good morning to everybody that's showing up. Remember that uh, this is gonna be on the replay. All right. It's gonna be on the replay today, uh, just in case you do show up late. Okay, you could we can always catch you on the replay. All right, let's go with rule number two. Okay. All right. This is a big one. All right. This is a big one. This is the one where people get headaches. All right. It's where people like they're about to give up on embroidery because of this little tiny simple detail that we're that we're gonna talk about right now. All right. And that is using the correct needles. All right. Of course, if you're going through 3D puff and through a hat. Okay, some hats are thicker than others, so uh, requires certain strength, okay, and, and a certain sharpness of your needles. All right, so let me show you this. Um, let me go back to uh, this right here. Let me show you this website right here. All right, this is just a, a, a website that I've used to uh, just look up certain needle information. All right, I'll, I'll post all these links on the description later today. All right, so you can you could kind of read through this and save it for your own personal uh re references okay but needles so we need when, when you're thinking of 3d puff there's a a couple things you got to know okay we got to have a um, you can't have a uh you can't have a small needle so you want to go 75 or an 80 needle and you want it to be sharp okay so here it it, it kind of gives you how to read uh, Gross Becker and a lot of the other ones, all right, how to identify the, the needle size and the, the identifier number, okay, but the point, these are the main ones we want to know, needle and point, okay, so needle size, you want it to be anywhere, 75, 11 is common, okay, that's like most, what well, most people use, okay, you should be good with 75, 11, if you're going to get something with, um, if you are going to use the dense foam, or you got a very detailed type work, uh, that requires extra strength, okay, uh, you might want to go with an 80, 
okay, 80 needle. And you always want to have a sharp point, okay? So here it has an R, and then here it tells you what these letters mean, okay? So the points here, you can read down and see what R means, right? R is kind of like universal, right? It's good for like everything, both projects, all right? But if you want the most sharpest, okay, if you want the sharpest, you could go here, RS, all right? This has a sharp points right here, all right? So you can see that. So if you're going with uh, needles, so you want to get 75, 80, 75 or 80, and you want a sharp point. So either an R or an RS, okay? And then one other thing, okay? These are all ball points. You want to stay away from FFG. So usually if somebody's struggling with 3D puff, and they tell you that they're using FFG, okay? That's That usually is the automatic culprit of a uh, broken needles, all right? But this one here, okay, this is another uh, feature on needles, okay? Get, get a door, okay, get a door. You see that, if you see that on your packaging, those are titanium needles, all right? It's just gonna hold, they're stronger and they're gonna last a whole lot longer. And if you're knocking out dozens and dozens and dozens of hat you want a needle that's going to hold through okay so uh, those are kind of like the three items to look out for when you're dealing with uh, needles all right so another thing that it, it seems kind of basic okay seems like something that uh, most people know but a lot of times um it, it may be a reason why you're struggling if you're having a uh, needle breaks all right so let me remove that all right. And also what happens, a big thing that happens, and this used to happen to us when we only had one, a one head machine, is you forget what needle is in a specific location, right? You just, you, you, you kind of assume that you have a certain needle. All right. Uh, my suggestion would be just buy, always buy the packs of a hundred needles. That way, if you're going to do a big project, okay, don't even take that chance. Just throw out that needle. All right, and put in a brand new one, especially if you're going to start on a new project. All right, all right, all right. So, uh, let's see, bam, bam. All right, good morning, everybody. We got people coming in. All right, all right. So that's rule number two. So the first two was kind of like getting your uh, your your materials ready, right? So the puff and the needles. Okay, something that we 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 don't really think about too much okay because sometimes it's a given that you know you already have the right needles but you just want to verify that you have the correct stuff all right all right and then this one here okay number three is 3d puff is used on specific garments all right so what that means is it's not really for stuff that's going to be laundered okay so if you're going to put it in the laundry it's really it probably isn't the best idea to put 3d foam all right, so you'll see a lot of people uh, requesting um, foam on, on, on T-shirts or polo shirts, okay? Uh, I'm not a big fan of that, okay, because I'm just thinking of the aftermath, especially when they wash it, what's going to happen to it, okay? And it is definitely advised not to dry clean uh, anything that has foam, okay? So if you have something that has foam, and it, does, it cannot be dry clean, all right? That's always a, um, a rule that uh, the manufacturer of the foams always talk about all right so kind of keep that in the back of your mind all right so uh i would just keep 3d foam okay i like to use it for hats of course right that's probably 90 percent of what it's used for and for uh backpacks all right or bags any type of bags those to me are the best reason why you would go 3d puff anything else you kind of got to tell the customer like hey you know uh it's not recommended to if you're going to wash it and all that stuff all right all right, so these first three, basic stuff, right? Basic information, but it's stuff that we can't forget about, okay? We can't forget about these little minor details because these are like make or break type stuff, all right? All right, let's go with rule number four uh, when working with 3D Puff, okay? Now we're going to kind of go into the uh, digitizing portion, all right? Because I think 3D Puff, like really the the, the hard work is in or not i wouldn't say the hard work but the details for it to be a great great design stitch out okay is in the digitizing all right and there's a bunch of little little details you gotta kind of look for when when working with 3d puff all right so rule number four 
is choosing the right stitch, all right? So 3D puff works best, okay? Works best when we're dealing with satin stitches, okay? So when we're dealing with satin stitches, for example, this eye right here, okay? This eye, that is a satin stitch right here. Hold on, let me change this color right here so it could be a little bit more visible. Okay, let me ungroup it. Uh, ungroup. All right, so when we're dealing with, when we're talking about uh, sand stitches, it's just stitches that are going from left to right. Okay, that's what we're dealing with. That's what we're talking about with sand stitches. Okay, so 3D puff, all right, that's, that's when it works best, okay? And it works best like this because you don't have, you have the stitches kind of, going over the foam, okay? And let me put these dots right here. Every time you see a dot here, okay? So if we zoom in close and we're looking at these dots, these are these are where the needle actually comes in, penetrates the hat, the foam, locks in with the bobbin and then comes out, all right? So this is the, the needle actually cutting our foam right here. All right, so uh, a satin stitch works best for that. Like it'll give you the cleanest, the cleanest uh, look on it. Okay, you could you could definitely use other stitches. Okay, but just overall, just overall design wise, uh, I think sand stitches. All right, definitely one of the the nicer finish when it comes time for uh, 3D puff. Okay, and then um, another thing is there's certain there's certain distances that your sand stitch has to be. Okay, so this is the big one for rule number four. Okay, so when you're dealing with when you're dealing with 3D puff, you want to be anywhere between two inch. Okay, so right here you could see my. Um, let me see. Oh, uh, you could see my size here. One point four by two. Well, let me go. Meters. Okay, millimeters. Okay, uh, width. You want your width of your sand stitches to be at minimum, okay, at minimum, uh, two millimeters all the way to like 10 millimeters, all right, depending how much your machine could take on the sand stitch, all right. So that's kind of like your criteria. So right here, we're at 5.92, so it's about six, six millimeters, all right. So that's kind of like a sweet spot for me. I like to have sand stitches at about that, that that distance, it's gonna give you a nice, clean, bold uh, 3D puff look, all right? So when we're dealing with choosing the right stitch, okay, choosing the right stitch with uh, sand stitches, and then making sure that it's thick enough where you're gonna actually see the design, but not so big, right? Because you, you, know, you could probably only go up to uh, anywhere from 10, 11, maybe 12 if your equipment, if your embroidery machine allows you to go all the way to 12. Okay, so um, those are like parameters that we got to deal with, all right? So it's sand stitches and be within parameters there. Okay, so that's what I'm talking about when I'm saying choose the right stitch, all right? Uh, and then we'll get into the details of this stitch because even though we selected this sand stitch, there's a lot of other small details that we got to talk about right here, all right? All right, uh, let me see. Uh, we got a question from... Uh, youngsters clothing if i bought a pack of bx fonts how would i know if i can use it for 3d puff okay uh that's a good question okay that's a good question because uh you would know if it's 3d puff if it's um if it's designed for 3d puff so you'll know if it's designed for 3d puff if it has these right here caps all right so we're going to talk about caps in a bit okay that's that's the number one way that you'll know Another way, this is all stuff we'll talk about, all right? Actually, I'm going into the details of all this, all right? So I'm gonna answer your question with all these rules, okay? So um, good question, all right? Good question. All right, let me see. Uh, and then Barb, I use Gross Becker's needle, sharp, titanium, and ballpoint. Yep, there we go. And then um, Sunrise Tactical Gear, what density, all right? Ooh, yeah, so that's a, one of my one of the rules too. Okay, so all these questions, I'm about to answer them with all the rules. All right, so definitely good questions. All right, because just like I said, when I select this, 
when I select this uh, sand stitch, there's a lot of inside information, right? There's a lot of inf information just in this little piece of um, sand stitch, all right? So I'm gonna talk about the, the density too. All right, so good questions here. All right, so let's go to the next one. All right, so num rule number four, rule num number five, okay? Just to answer the last question is, you gotta set your densities correctly. All right, so density settings, all right, density settings. This is how, okay, so this is how you're going to know if it's created for puff, all right? So regular, just regular embroidery, your density. All right, let me pull up, let me pull up, uh, let me pull it up in full screen, show you my uh, properties. All right, so right now, so if we look at, um, okay, if we look at it right now, we're at a, our density as 0.18, all right? So that means they are very close to each other. If I measure this, all right, if I measure this from point, oh, well, I didn't like that. All right, hold on. I probably zoomed in too much. Hold on. All right. Let's measure this again. If I measure this, and I'm just going from point to point. All right. So from point to point is going from 0.18. That's what it means when it says density. All right. So when you're dealing with 3D puff, uh, these dots here, that's the needle actually cutting and perforating your uh, your foam. Okay, so I like I think a sweet spot is 0.18. Okay, uh, 0.18 is good. You, I've seen people go all the way down to 0.10. Okay, uh, so it, it's as a preference, right? So you gotta you gotta see what works for you. But I think 0.18 is pretty good. Okay, let me see. And yeah, so usually when you're just dealing with regular, when you're dealing with um, when you're dealing with regular uh, everyday embroidery, not 3D, so let's say like polo shirt, usually your density is all the way up to like a 3.6 or a 3.8, okay? You don't need that tight of a density, okay? But once you're going 3D puff, in order to perforate that puff, now you gotta bring down that density, all right? So it's more, it's more needle penetration, okay? And so what, what I like to call it, um, it's like embroidery, uh, it's surgical embroidery all right so you're like you're cutting up that 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 foam with a thousand thousand little needle penetrations all right so that's that's the main rule when you're dealing with uh 3d puff okay density you got to drop it down okay just so when you take off that foam it comes off easily and there's no foam sticking out all right so I think I answered like three questions with that one right there. All right. Oh, uh, let me see. Bam, let me see if there's any more. All right. So rule number five, when we're dealing with 3D puff, all right, density plays a big, big role, right? If you see that your that your foam is sticking out, okay, or maybe, maybe, okay, if you're getting too many needle breaks, okay, it might be that your density is too tight, okay, maybe you might have to raise your density up a bit, okay? And then another thing is with density is um, you might have to work with, you You might have to switch your settings, okay? There's a setting called a short, so there's short stitches, okay? When you're dealing with short stitches, that really deals with when you work with curves. All right, let me see if I have a curve here. Uh, no, I don't. Uh, let me show you what I'm talking about. All right. Uh, if you're dealing with like a tight turn, for example, this, right? It's just some random. Okay. If you're dealing, well, hold on. This is a random example that I'm about to give you right now. Oh, not this one. Oh, hold on. Yeah, I'll give it to you right here. 
All right, so when we're dealing with uh, short stitches, okay, see the difference between here where your stitches go kind of like in a uh, single file line perfectly, all right? That's because our curve isn't as tight, okay? But here, we tightened up the curve, and when you when you use short, short stitches, you'll see that the, the software, it detects that we're going to have some stitches that are too close to each other. All right, so it's going to shift instead of putting the next one down here right next to it. It's going to make a, a judgment call based on your short stitches and it's going to raise that stitch up. OK, that way it's going to put a, a stitch here and instead of putting it here, it's going to kind of protect itself. OK, so anytime you use short stitches, uh, you're protecting yourself from needle breaks. All right. So just kind of keep that in the back of your mind. If you're getting needle breaks at certain corners okay usually they happen like at turn turning points uh just verify that your that your short stitches are turned on okay so that anytime you hear the phrase uh short stitches that what it means instead of stitching here it's gonna move it up here okay all right so that that deals with um density all right all right let's go with uh, rule number six okay and this, these are all dealing with uh, with the digitizing part, all right? Because when it's digitizing, that's where the make or break, uh, that's where make or break of the quality and the outcome, okay? So number six, rule number six, okay? We have to remove underlay, all right? So usually, usually if you're doing a regular letter, so let's do like the letter um, D, right? Let's do letter D. Okay. When we're dealing with regular letters, you'll see all this underlay happening under here. Okay. So you see the edge, you see the zigzag. So let's look at our uh, underlay. Okay. You'll see this edge. So if I take it off, you'll see that it can, all right. You'll see that underlay comes off, right? Uh, regular, regular embroidery, you want this underlay to be there just to give it base. Okay. But when we deal with 3D puff, we definitely want to remove that stuff, all right? So notice here on my letter I, okay, all underlay removed, okay? You could still see underlay underneath, so you still see stitches running around down below, and those are just my travel stitches, okay? Those are my travel stitches uh, going from one side to another. So it'll start one side, it'll travel down, okay? And one thing to note is when you do have travel stitches, uh, you want to keep it as minimum as possible, right? That way your foam doesn't start getting crushed down with excessive uh, underlay, all right? But run stitches, they're not really going to push your, they're not going to really push it uh, too much down to the point where it's going to be noticeable, right? But once, once you add like a, a, a zigzag or something, Right. If I were to add this underlay here, it would start bringing down my foam, okay? Which kind of defeats the purpose of doing foam, okay? It's just going to start flattening, all right? So always remove your underlay and verify that that um, that your underlay is removed, all right? Um, at the very minimum, you could keep center runs just to, just to kind of keep your... Uh, your design from moving, okay? It, it, it'll allow your design to move from one side to another. So sometimes you will see uh, a center run underlay, but usually you could remove it, okay? I like to just, if I'm gonna have a center run, I wanna put my own center run on it, all right? But you definitely wanna remove any other types of, uh, any other types of underlays, all right? All right, so that is rule number six when dealing with um, 3D puff. All right. And then this is the big one here. All right. This is the one. Okay. So to answer the previous question, how do you know if a, if a, if a design is made for digitizing? All right. And it's this one. All right. So rule number seven, capping. Okay. Capping. And when we talk about capping, this is what we're talking about. All right. So these here are your caps. Okay. So notice here where I said that every time you see a dot here, that's the needle penetrating, right? 
it's it's doing those little fine cuts okay but notice so let me remove this guy here if i were to move, remove this this cap right here notice there's no dots up here right so the 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 foam is not being penetrated right here it's not being cut all right if we were to leave it like this you would have a big fat piece of foam sticking out of here all right so since it wasn't cut here okay when you pull this foam out you would have all this excessive foam just kind of sticking out okay it will be so noticeable it would be very ugly okay that that why that's why okay that's why we create these caps okay so these caps close it, it completes the cut on this column stitch right here all right and then notice here okay notice how we have space between here all right so let me go to the actual design of the actual design here all right this is the this is the this is the file where I actually digitized it all right as you see I have like lines going all over the place all right let's talk about these lines right here okay I think you can see it yeah you see these blue lines these are half millimeter lines right here okay so if we want to verify we could just draw a square okay hold on make this so okay okay we can you create a square this is what I usually do to create my lines. I, I create a square, I adjust it. Okay, and then you'll see here, height. So down here on the bottom, I could create a 0.5 height. Okay, or you can, uh, you can also put it one millimeter. Let's make it one millimeter. And then line it up here. All right, and then you know it's the half because this, this is the halfway line next here the top okay so this whole thing is one millimeter cut in half okay and then i'll tell you why that's important here okay so here let's talk about this l right here okay this l when you're digitizing uh for these caps this is this is where i'll tell you the caps is kind of like um i would say out of all the uh, out of all the settings and digitizing puff I would say that capping, setting up your capping is probably the most difficult uh, setting to get, okay? And the precision. And I'll tell you why, okay? Because this here is supposed to block off, it's supposed to block off the puff that's about to stick out, okay? And there's, um, there's different settings that people use, okay? There is no one setting that would be good for any type of uh, project, okay? A lot of this is just project by project. You have to tweak as you go, all right? So ideally, okay, so ideally we're doing the letter L here, okay? The actual letter, okay, hold on. Let me, let me uh, put it exactly where it's supposed to be. Let me select it all. Let me just move it to the side a bit so it can line up with the actual L. all right so this l here okay you notice that i didn't go all the way up to the top okay and you'll see that it's a little over a half a uh, a little over a half an inch so maybe it's it's almost at 0.75 millimeter not an inch millimeters okay so each line is 0.5 millimeters Okay, so I'm half of that, so I'm, up, I'm almost at 0.75 millimeters. Okay, the reason why, because this is where you get your push-pull compensation. This, this, um, hold on, let me, let me ungroup this. This L, what's about to happen, okay, this here, when it finally stitches out, okay, it, it's going to push itself, so the thread, Okay. It's trying to find a place. It's going to try to find a place to settle down. And by the time they settle down, they're going to push each other. Okay. So even though it looks like this on the, even though it looks like this on the software, the thread is actually going to push itself and land 
right here. Okay, so when we're talking about push pull, that's what we're talking about. Okay, so you got to anticipate for it to push itself. So you got to you got to bring it down a bit. Okay, and then here this cap. Okay, the cap is going to do the same thing. It's going to pull itself in. So when it finally when it finally stitches out, it ends up showing up here. Okay, so the final outcome. Our final outcome looks like this. Okay, when everything's done perfect, your cap looks like this. Okay, your cap is right here on the top, and your letter L lands right on top of that cap. Okay, that's that's perfect world. Okay, that's perfect world. What happens? Okay, so when you're doing these adjustments, you're anticipating for that to happen. So when you see your designs, like if you see your digitizer designs, you'll notice that they're not digit, they're not, they're not digitized perfectly the perfect the way the the design is made, right? They gotta anticipate for that push and pull. All right, so that's why this cap. Let me tell you what what happens if you don't get this cap correct. Okay, let's say this cap, you started it here, right? You started it here, you di you digitized it here, it ended up landing here. This sand stitch ends up going over, okay, in real life. And what happens here, this is where, this is like worst case scenario right here, okay? Your worst case scenario is your cap goes under your sand stitch, okay? Your, your cap, by the time it stitches out, goes under your sand stitch now all these these threads that are here okay you see these that overlap it now okay now it just hangs off okay it's like a um, power line right they're just like hanging off dangling by itself it, it's so obvious when that happens all right so one thing i want to talk to you about capping if for some reason your 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 these these stitches the comb stitches are hanging over usually it's a it's a quick fix okay usually it's a quick fix uh, let me put bring this back okay uh you can always raise this up you can always pick this one up more so let's say you did a uh, stitch out you let's say you did a practice stitch out and you don't like the way it looks uh the the column stitch is overlapping your your cap stitch you can always raise it up, okay? If you have the software, if you have the basic software, you don't have to wait for your digitizer to make this change, okay? You could just go ahead and kind of raise it up or raise it down. And same thing with this column stitch, okay? If you see that the column stitch isn't set correctly, you could do the same thing is either raise it up if it needs to raise up or raise it more down, okay? And I'll tell you one thing that, Usually, if your uh, digitizer uh, did a sample, right? Let's say they sampled their design and it looked perfect with their um, on their hat. That doesn't necessarily mean whatever you stitch it on is going to be perfect on your hat, right? Because maybe you're you're using a different type of hat, uh, even from like brand to brand. Like let's say you use a flex fit and you go to a Richardson, you might have to do a tiny tiny tweak here and there all right just to get these caps uh nice and clean okay so one one good practice to do and i i always do this practice all right i always go to lids i look at the the major league baseball hats and i see and i study like how their capping is right how how kind of precisely it is okay and i always use that as a reference kind of like um make sure that all my stuff is kind of on that level, all right? So usually it takes little small tweaking, okay? Sometimes it's just a matter of raising it up or down like a hair, like a fraction of a hair to get it perfect, all right? So when you're dealing with 3D puff, capping is uh, mandatory, okay? You have to have cap or else you're gonna have foam kind of sticking out of your columns, all right? So that is there rule number seven capping uh and like i said it's it's one of the more uh 
it's like a moving target okay because just when you think you got it perfect okay you might have it perfect on a specific garment or a specific hat but then you change a little bit of the settings of the hat now you got to do little small tweaks okay it's not like big tweaks that you got to do okay sometimes it's just minor little tweaks to get that piece clean all right and i i actually have a sample here and uh a lot of this stuff is cleaned up during the cleanup portion too okay so we'll talk about the cleanup portion put this all back to normal all right hold on edit control one let me just line this up real quick all right so that was uh that was rule number seven all right let me make sure let me let me see if we're good with the questions all right bam bam all right najin uh such great info all right appreciate that um, all right anja from netherlands peace for everybody all right thank you for coming by all right do we have let me see uh question from linda do you have a video showing how you create the cap for letters okay um i don't think i have a video showing capping but let me just show you real quick i, I kind of showed you right now how i go about but let me just show you real quick because that is a good question right there all right so let me pull let me show you how i would cap right because i have everything necessary that i got right here uh let me ungroup this so i'm just gonna Copy paste this guy here, move him to the side. Okay. Let me create a quick cap real quick for you. Okay. So I would always create the actual um, column stitch first. Okay. This is just the regular eye, right? Now you got to put all the pieces that go down with it. All right. So I could, I could line this up so it can be perfectly on this line. All right. And then I know the push pull. So my final outcome, this, this letter I is going to end up landing like here, between here, here, maybe all the way up to here to one millimeter. So I want to start my cap all the way up here. All right. So what I do, I'm just going to make also a column stitch. You want to, you want to be lined up here. Hold on. Let me select this. All right. All right. I just put this line to kind of show you where I'm going to start. So I know I'm going to get a, I'll anticipate a push, All right? Oh, this guy's going to push up here. So I could start from here, all right? And you're just making like a, uh, a trapezoid. 2.94, all right? And then you want a straight line here. So I'm pushing control to keep that straight line there. And then keeping a straight line here. All right, so yeah, you're building like a trapezoid. All right, so that's your cap here. Now, all right, now this, the density of your cap, okay? So your density of cap plays a big role. Okay, so we gotta take that. And we're gonna put it, instead of 38, so like I said, 38 is usually common, regular everyday density. Uh, 0.18 is for uh, foam. But since this is a cap, we could keep it at a 0.25. Okay, 0.25 here, all right? And if you're, um, if you're, if your uh, software has this very useful um, setting here, okay, you could put a jagged edge. So you see how my my edges just notice here they're perfect. Then if you put a jagged edge, okay, now they become all sharp. All right, and then you can switch this to a one millimeter. All right, bam bam. All right, so that's how you create it. Uh, one thing to note on your um, on your uh, capping stitch. All right, usually what happens, 
if this becomes too wide, let's say your cap becomes too wide, you're gonna have a mess right here, all right? Because uh, this, this, these threads here don't have a clean place to park themselves in there, all right? So you wanna make sure it's not too big, it's not too small, right? Where too much excessive foam is gonna be sticking out here. So also you wanna find that sweet spot. Okay, usually you wanna line it up right with that blue line. Okay, hold on. Let me, let, me, um, let me get out of, let me go solo mode. All right. All right, sorry about that, sorry about that. I just saw that where I was, uh, I didn't have my full screen. All right, so once again, what I was saying is, uh, one thing you gotta look out for you don't want you don't want your uh, your capping, right, to be out of bounds right here, okay? Because what would happen, right? It's not going to connect clean, right? You want this capping to find a clean landing spot, right? Landing spot. That way, when everything pushes and pulls, by the time you push and pull, everything lands perfect like this, All right? Of course. Uh, of course, you want this all the way to top, right? Yeah, you want, right? On a perfect day, that's how your capping would, would look, okay? Probably a little up, a little up. Okay, you just kind of want it barely sticking out, kind of like that. that. That would be like a perfect cap right there. Okay, and like I said, usually it takes um, it takes a little practice to get it perfect like this. Okay, and sometimes uh, there's no one setting. Okay, there's no one setting that'll give you the perfect uh, measurement. Okay, but usually uh, I think a 0.5 or a one inch, anywhere between a 0.5 or a one inch push pull uh, ratio, you should be good within there. So if you want to start like at a 0.75. Uh, you should be good. All right, Anja uh, says, "What's capping?" All right, what's cap? This is capping right here. Okay, uh, capping. You are you are capping the column stitch. So you really see this black part, right? So the back part, the black, the black sand stitches is what you see. And capping, okay, capping is going to be right under. So we could cut and perforate the foam on the column stitch, all right? Since there's nothing here to cut the foam here, we need to add that that piece of uh, cap to cut that foam straight, okay? All right, and then, let's see, this is a good question here. Uh, can you run the stitch player for one letter so we can see the, yes, 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 very. So you're, you're, you're like, Two steps ahead of me, all right? Because that's part of my, uh, that's one of my rules right now that I'm going to talk about, all right? Is the actual, uh, the order of everything being ran, all right? All right. Uh, good morning, Janet. Sorry I'm late. All right, it's all good. We have a, uh, remember, this is all going to be played on the replay, all right? Because uh, it's a lot of information, all right? So you might have to see it once or twice to get everything. All right, bam, bam. Uh, all right, I think we're good with question. Uh, and then, do you, uh, Linda? Good question. Do you first put a placement stitch for the puff? Yeah, usually it's a good idea if you want to know exactly where. Like, if you want to cut your puff to an exact size, so you know the size of it, you could put a uh, a placement stitch. That's a good idea. It's not necessary, but it is helpful. All right, so number seven, capping. All right, capping. And now, one thing. Let me, hold on. Let me let me pull this up right here. All right. One thing is, I'm I'm talking about a lot of. Uh, I'm talking a lot about. I'm talking a lot about these small details. Okay, and I want to introduce it so when we start going into the more in uh, more detail type uh, digitizing. Okay, you kind of already have an idea of what I'm talking about. All right, that way, when we start doing um, puff projects, and I'm start and I start go and I go straight into the capping portion, you already know what I'm talking about. All right, we I, we kind of already went into a brief overview, 
and now you can kind of see exactly like how it goes about. All right. All right. Let's go with uh, rule number eight. All right. Rule number eight. This is very important here is bridges. Let's talk about bridges. All right. Let me go full screen right here. All right. Bridges is something that you'll, you'll see a lot. Okay. Uh, a location where you'll see bridges. All right. Let's delete this guy here. All right. Let's say the letter P. All right. Letter P requires a bridge. All right. Let me see. Create letter. All right, if we were to prepare this for a uh, puff, all right, so we would, let me go real quick on what we would do, right? First, remove underlay. So it's all the stuff that we just talked about, okay? Fills, put it to a 0.18, okay? All right, bam, bam. And then we would add our uh, cap, all right? Just to speed up this process, I'm going to steal this cap. Okay, I'm going to steal this cap. Put it right here. Okay, it's upside down right now, so I could just flip it. All right. All right, let's talk about this guy here. All right, this here. So you see this overlap here? When you have an overlap, okay, this would be the correct way to do it. Okay, bam. So this is what we call a bridge, okay? What you want in, in Puff is to, there's different ways to do it. The way I like to do it is I, I could run an under, an, uh, a running stitch, and you could just create your own bridge. And what it is, is you're just creating stitches to kind of connect itself okay so it could connect itself all right so let me see let's hide this guy hide all right so this would be your bridge right here right you just bridge you you're you are Connecting two two pieces that are intersecting each other and you're bridging them together. All right. So it's a common word that you'll hear. Unhide. Okay. Common word that you'll hear. You would put this last. Okay. So it'd be underneath. All right. So anytime you hear a bridge, uh, so reason why that's important. Let me, let me show you real quick what. All right. Reason why it's important is because sometimes. Uh, you might have a uh, a design that's opening up, okay? And it's very obvious that it's opening up. So you might want to add a bridge or you might want to tell your digitizer to add a bridge, okay? Uh, another way that bridges are usually done. So let's take out this guy here. Uh, you'll see it also done. They'll, they could draw a box here. All right, actually... Let me delete that and make a more accurate one. You can make a box. Okay. And then let me just change the color so you can kind of see what is happening. All right. You could, you, you, this would be under the P. Okay. I'm just showing you so you could see it. Um, you would change the density. Okay. You want a small density or a bigger density. So you could put like 880, 0 0.80. All right, you could use this as a bridge too, okay? Easy way to do a bridge, take out all this underlay, you don't need all this. All right, so you could, do a, you could do a bridge like that, like very quick and easy. That's connecting this piece that's going from up to down, and that's connecting this piece right here. All right, so you would connect this piece. That piece would be right under there, all right? So nobody sees a bridge, right? But you know it's there, and you put it there so these two interconnecting uh, stitches, they don't kind of pull each other apart, all right? So when we're dealing with bridges, we're talking about that, that type of stitch right there, okay? Very popular. 
and very uh, useful if your stitches are pulling each other away. All right. All right. So let me go back to uh, make sure we got no question. Uh, and then uh, Roslyn, what about using the cap function option on the on the software? All right. So you 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 saw me. The way I do it, I just manually do it. And then the only function that, that I use is that effects, is putting that uh, jagged edge and I'm moving it to one millimeter. Okay. That's really the only function that I use. So uh, it's probably like three steps, right? Creating the creating the box and then putting the, the function on it. All right. Unless there's, an, uh, unless there's another function that I don't know about, but that's usually the way that I do it. All right. And, and also maybe another program has a different way to do it. All right. Um, there are on a lot of softwares, there are, um, uh, there are fonts that already come like puff ready. All right. Let's go, let's, Let's see, like this one, 3D block. Okay. Uh, so right here, oh, this is a good example right here. Okay. So right here, you'll see. So these are the pre-made uh, fonts that the that the software gives. I'm pretty sure every software has it. But you could see here has the capping. Okay. Has the jagged edge. It has a very jagged. Okay. A couple things that I see that's probably unnecessary is the underlay. Okay. So let me see if I can take out underlay. Yeah, we could probably take off all that stuff. Okay, still cap. Uh, hold on. It still it keeps. Yeah, I don't know why it keeps it though. All right, it kept it kept the underlay, which is unnecessary. Um, so here, you kind of see a bridge, or it's kind of overlapping itself. Okay. Uh, so yeah, this one, there should be a bridge here. So you see a bridge here too. All right. So th that's the only other uh, function that I can think of that has a um, 3D puff. But you could you could kind of maybe get away with the 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 keyboard shortcuts. Okay. But as you can see, it probably has some stuff that you don't need. All right. All right. Good stuff right there. All right. All right. All right, we got uh, Kuman from Uganda. All right, so we got people from all over the world. All right, thank you for stopping by. All right, so that is bridges. Okay, very useful item. All right, now number nine. This is where, this is for me, number nine is where the time consuming part happens because a lot of this other stuff, when you're just, uh, you could zone out and copy your design. Okay, a lot of the stuff, a lot of digitizing is just tracing. All right, so let's see. Right, so this, like, this is my design, right? Um, so a lot of times when the first part of digitizing, you're just tracing, right, the artwork. Uh, you're, you are thinking, you are using your brain, but a lot of times you can go autopilot and you could just zone out, right, and just come up with something very nice. But this next step is where you actually have to stop and think about all the little details from beginning to end, okay? So this is where we are going to use the, the replay, uh, the auto replay, right? And you gotta make sure everything that you, that you uh, programmed, everything is set as you programmed, okay? Nothing should be done um, by chance or there should not be any uh, unexpected uh, stitches or, or a sequence happening. Okay, so number nine, okay, okay, rule number nine is sequence and confirming settings. All right, so let's talk about, see what, uh, what we're talking about when we say sequencing, okay. Let me remove, let me remove this artwork, okay. Um, hold on. Let's see. 
Oh, I forgot where I put my sketches for a second. All right. So now, now this is the part where you want to replay everything. So let me, hold on. Let me go full screen right here. Let me remove all this stuff here. All right. So when we replay it, okay. So I created this one. Uh, this design, the Roman numerals from 1 through 100. Okay. The Roman numerals from 1 through 100. Uh, I created this and then uh, I digitized it. And then I, I stitched it out to confirm that everything looked good. And then I'll post this up as a free uh, download later today. All right. So that way, whatever your favorite number is, you can put it on a hat. All right. Just like I did. All right. So I I um, I went ahead, digitized it. But before I mean, I went ahead and I stitched it out. But before I did that, I want to make sure that everything is set as planned. All right. So my plan was uh, with phone, you want to start. This is where you really want to start center out. OK, so let me see. All right, this is where you want to start center out because if you're all over the place with the foam, the foam could start cr uh, crunching in itself, all right? And then if you have like a little wave of foam, all right, just because the stitches were going all over the place, certain areas could start getting very, very stiff, very hard, and it could it could lead to needle breaks, okay? If, if if you don't kind of like flatten out that that foam nice and good, all right. So, kind of, we'll take that into consideration when we see this replay, all right? You'll see how it starts from the center, moves to the right, and then it goes back to the left, all right. If I remember right, all right. So let's go full screen, Shift R to replay, all right. So right now it's gonna do that X, all right. All right, hold on. Let me let me pause real quick to show you what what just happened right there. All right, so here, okay, I'm doing the X, and notice I put this, I put this run stitch to go from from that center out, and the main purpose for me doing that is for these stitches to lock into to lock in with that uh, foam, okay. So by running that X going down, okay, I'm, I'm it's gonna hold the foam pretty good. So you really want to, when, when I put, when I hold the phone, I put like a piece of tape on the phone. And once it gets that first stitch, especially that diagonal one, it's, it's almost like 80% locked in. Okay. I probably just got to verify and make sure it's not going to shift. Okay. But that was the point of going across real quick. All right. So now it's going, it went straight into this um, cat stitch. All right, so it's going to do this cap and then it's going to run all the way through. Okay, I might I might make an adjustment right here. I have the, the X running at this angle, which I might take a look at it. It looks good right now, but I might look at it. So here it's going to run another cap stitch. Okay, now it's going to complete this part of the X. All right, it's going to complete this side. And now it's going to do that overlap. Okay, here, well, I want to stop it right here. I want to show you something. Here, I could have done a, um, a a bridge, okay? Sometimes I don't do a bridge unless if it's necessary. Like, I see that the, the, the stitch is opened up, okay? But after the stitch out, they don't open up, so I'm good with that. I could continue going, all right? So now it's going to complete that. It's going to go down. Now it's going to complete this whole stitch from, from bottom on up, all right? And then we can speed it up a bit, okay? So that is uh, that is the first part, the X. All right, so. All right, so let me just tell you real quick what the, I, I told you that it was very time consuming. All right, so the time consuming part is making sure there's no cuts. So in this X, when I did this X, zero cuts so you got to make sure you know where your stitches start and where your stitches end and you'll see here let me show you you'll see here that um 
Let me show you. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, about 11 different objects. Okay, so you got to make sure they're all in order. Okay, they're all in order. So you're telling, you're telling the, the, you're telling the software at what order you want it to go. All right, so let me show you what I'm talking about. Hold on. All right. All right, so when you're setting up the order, you want to select. Oh, okay, that's why. I have it grouped. Ungroup. All right, you, you're going to tell the order. So you want to say, hey, I want to go, I want to go this line first. Hold on, let me change this color. Hold on. All right, so when you're selecting it, okay. Should have the drawing here. Okay, we want to go, remember that first diagonal line? You want to have that, that diagonal line connecting to the, to the capping stitch, running that first leg, okay, walking. Okay, notice I have that walking stitch, walking all the way up. And you're program you're programming all these stitches. Okay, so you kind of gotta have an idea of how you want of how you want everything to go. Okay. So you're setting up this order. Okay, so after this capping stitch, you're putting all this in order. You're putting the start, the stop, verifying you don't have any cuts. Okay, and then from there you're moving on up. Then you're creating this. And usually I, I, I do the sequencing after I digitize all the objects, then I'm doing it. But everybody has their own preference. And then you have this long line going down here. You got this uh, capping stitch coming here. And then you got this from going from top to bottom. All right. So to me, that's kind of like the, the thinking part, making sure you have zero cuts and everything is going exactly like how you have it planned. All right, so let's continue. I want to let it run right now. Well, I read some questions. All right, so let me fast forward this X since we already saw it. All right, now this is the V. Okay, so the V, same thing. It's gonna that stitch is gonna come in. Okay, it's gonna. I put this stitch down here just so it could hold that foam pretty good. It went up, did that cap. Is doing the first leg of the stitch. All right. So I'll let this run while I read some questions real quick. Um, hold on, let me remove this. All right. Uh, all right. Good morning or afternoon or evening. Uh, Neno, hi from Croatia. All right. Um, and then uh, Barb, Youngsters clone. unless the BX font says it's for puff and braid, the BX is not puff. The majority of BX puffs are not for puff. All right. Thank you for answering that. And then thank you for the reminder. Hit that, that like button. Let uh, YouTube know that we're right here learning. All right, all right. Amen. All right. So we saw that V. Let me see. Yeah, we can see that V. Okay, so you see how I came in. I did that bottom cap. Okay, take it up, do that top one, and now we could just finish off and go all the way down. All right, and then I extended that one to close it up. Okay, now this here. This is the, the one. Okay, of course, that's the easy one. Okay, so let me see. How do we do that? So we put that, we have that top, uh, we have that uh, running stitch running from top to bottom. Okay. Just to hold that foam. Going to connect to that uh, cap, cap that bottom. 
Now we cap the top, and now we could go from bottom on up. All right. Close it out. Okay. Now it's doing the L. So same thing. I started from here, middle, did this cap, went back up, and now it's just going to close it up. Bottom to up. All right. So really, the I would say the intense, the the labor intense portion is doing the bottom portion of it. Okay. Because the actual text part, uh, the the digitizing of the actual letter, I would say that's the easy part. The thinking part is all the bottom stuff. The capping, making sure you don't have any unnecessary cuts. Okay. And then this one is. The C, okay, the C. So I'm always doing the caps first, especially if it's one shot, okay? If we're gonna go from the C, once the C is just one shot. So as, as soon as you get that cap, those caps, then you can start from the beginning all the way to the end, okay? Uh, today, I'm keeping it very basic because there's so many different routes and options that you can do uh, when it comes to lettering or just in, in 3D Puff in general, uh, a lot of stuff that uh, alternative routes that you can do things, all right? I don't want to get into too much details of all the different, because there's thousands of thousands of different options that we can do when we're uh, digitizing for Puff. But I at least want to talk about the, the most important stuff today. Okay, that way, when we start getting into the into the the more advanced stuff okay we all know what what we're talking about all right so these are these stitches right here all right um very basic right now okay very basic stuff um but like i said earlier it's all stuff that has to be coming in correct all right now is the now you have your uh your sequence you confirmed your setting okay so when we confirm our settings we want to make sure We want to make sure that all of, so let me ungroup all this, uh, ungroup. So when I'm talking about the uh, confirming settings, all right, so if I'm confirming settings, what I'm talking about, I want to make sure everything is set up the way I want it to be, all right? So all my set, all my caps. So what I like to do, I like to uh, select all my caps, right? You want to select all your caps. And you could kind of tell these are caps by the way they're shaped. Okay. You could select all your caps and you're confirming, right? So cap, 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 bam, 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 bam. Okay. Then you confirm that they're all the same uh, density, right? 0.25. And this is just making sure everything is all uniform, okay? Underlay, we don't want any underlay. Okay, so take out all the underlay. So now I know all my caps are set good. All right, and then you do the same thing, but with the sand stitches. All right, select all your sand. Actually, I could just select them like this. These are the easy ones to get. So select your sand stitches, your, your main ones, right? So zero underlay, you go into the fields, everything is 0.18, okay? So that's really the big ones right there. All right, and then, so that's what I'm talking about when you're confirming your settings, all right? And then you wanna make sure you don't have any unnecessary cuts. So we go to information, design, five trims okay for five letters one two three four five all right so i'm looking for only five trims all right so everything is set up good but this is the big one here all right trims because sometimes uh something that will like my pet peeve is unnecessary cuts all right hold on let me see all right so the big thing here uh unnecessary cuts uh right it like ruins my day okay so i always I'm always checking on the settings, uh, how many trims does it, and then I count and I verify that those trims, I, I definitely want those trims to be there, all right? So big thing to know is where are your trims, and 
did you purposely put a trim there? Okay. All right. So that's what I'm talking about when we're dealing with um, with the, the settings. All right. The sequence and settings. All right. So that, that one there, the most important thing because you did all the heavy lifting. Okay. You did all the heavy lifting and you, um, and now it's just time before you save it, right? Before you save it and do your sample, you want to make sure everything that you set up is already good to go. All right. All right. Now we get all the way to the final one, right? Rule 10. I would say up to this point, we're probably 60% done. All right. We, 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 we still need 40%. Okay. And it's so minor. It's so minor, but so important. It's this last rule. Okay. And as long as you did everything, you're digitizing your hooping correctly, step 10 or rule number 10, all right, shouldn't take so long, all right? As long as everything was done correctly from choosing the right puff to choosing the right needle to setting up all your settings and making sure your sequence was all correct, okay? As soon as you got one through nine, good, okay? Number 10, rule number 10, should be a cake all right and rule number 10 is the cleanup all right the cleanup so we all know if you if you work with uh if you work with 3d puff you already know that the cleanup is the make or break okay that would be the part that is the part where kind of puts everything right and makes everything look professional and very right that standard goes all the way up Okay, which is the cleanup, all right? So let's talk about this cleanup, okay? So uh, I actually have a, uh, I just, before we started, I stitched one out, okay? So let me, let me uh, turn on this light over here. Give me one sec. I got the GoPro here. I got, I got one I wanna show you. I haven't touched it yet. I haven't touched this hat yet. I want to clean it all together. All right. So we can clean it as a group. This will be the, the free file that I'm going to put up for download later on today. All right. So I was just verifying that the file was good to go. Okay, I'm going to turn on the GoPro. All right, so right now, as you can see, I just took off the, the puff right here. All right. All right, so it looks like we need some cleaning. This puff right here, it's not the, it's not the, the strong one. It's just the regular, the regular three millimeter. All right, but as you can see, the ends, right? The ends need some cleaning. All right, so I want to go ahead and I want to clean it all together. All right, um, let me just check. All right, all right, good morning. Good morning, Jeanette. All right, uh, let's see, we got a question right here. In your design, it doesn't look like you added a placement stitch, so do you just place full? Yeah, 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 so if you don't put a placement stitch, so on this one, I kind of already knew. I traced it, I traced the file. So I kind of already had an idea of how big the design was going to be. So I did not put a placement stitch. Okay. So it, like I said earlier, it's not necessary. Uh, it is if you have like the exact size of the foam and you want to know exactly where to put that foam, then uh, yeah, you could put a placement stitch. Uh, it, it could be useful. Okay. All right. Uh, Jeanette. One recommendation for you, so so if you can make the pointer on the screen bigger, it will be easier for him. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to look into that one. All right, cool, cool. Bam, bam. All right. All right, I'll come back to this, uh, to the questions right now. But 
let's go ahead. Let's clean up this hat right here. Okay. Well, let me first see how it came out because I haven't even seen. I really haven't seen how it came out. All right. So. Let me see if I can get you a good angle right here. Okay. So, one piece of tearaway. This is a, uh, so it's a structured hat. Okay, flexed it. All right, now, let me show you. I keep it very basic with tools. In my box of goodies right here. All right. So I got my sim reap, my seam reaper, seam ripper. Okay, tongue tie, tongue tie right here. All right. Let me stamp it. All right. So we got puff. Sticking out from right here, right from the cap. Usually, that's where your puff wants to come out of. It's from the it's from the cap. But with an easy push, look at that. It just kind of disappears. All right. You want to push as much. You want to push as much foam back in, just so you don't lose any of that puffiness. All right. So when you first get your design, right, it. Uh, it's not going to look 100% like ready to box and ship out. Okay, you do have to do a couple of uh, small details. Okay, so all we're doing is pushing in this foam. All right, so you see a little foam coming out. Let me see. Let me make sure I'm good on the camera. And then just like that bit. Let me bring in another light. All right. Got lights everywhere. All right, cool, cool. Perfect. All right, so all I'm going to do is push this foam in. Okay, if you got like just excessive amount, you could you could uh, take them out with a tweezer. Okay. So we'll get right here. All right, so I'm just kind of making sure that my my caps easily go in. Okay, so this is going to be a two step. This is first pushing in the foam, step number one, and then the second one, which kind of puts everything together, is the, is the heat gun. And the heat gun kind of really makes it. So if you do this part good, okay, the heat gun just makes it even better. All right, so what I'm looking at right here, I'm just making sure that my caps are going inside and getting covered by my sand stick. Right on top. You do get. You can get uh, pieces of foam there. Okay, you could take them out like that. But for the most part, I just push them in. So, like, for right here, for example, here. This guy was trying to stick out. So, all you gotta do is stick it back in. You can get a little piece. So this is really where the final, the final portion of everything, right? Is right here. Like I said, it's, it's really the capping where where the puff wants to come out. You just 
push that one back. So you have two choices you can either push the one back in or you can take out that hybrid vertical to push it back in. And there's really not much that we have to do here. So the heat gun is really usually the, the, the least amount of work you gotta clean up. And we already know the heat gun is gonna be clean before the heat gun. So here at this corner, I want to take out this unit and just smoothly push it back in. So you can see a lot of uh, some of the puff here, like here on the sides, some of the puff is trying to creep out. But that's where the, the, the heat gun is going to just kind of make everything disappear. Make sure I got a good bridge connect there. Now I gotta see where I'm gonna put my heat gun because it's kind of like on the other side of the room. So let's go see. All right, so the cap made it like perfect with the, with the sanity. All I got is like the, the fuzzy uh, foam, but that, that's all going to be taken care of with the, with the heat gun. So, my heat gun's not going to reach there, but I got a good extent. This extension cord for my heat it's an industrial extension cord, so it should be good. So, heat gun wise, I keep it very basic. I just have a very basic, basic heat gun, it's nothing special.
All right, let me know when you guys could hear me. I know. All right, I'm back on track right now. Hook up my All right, do you guys do you guys hear me? Just one person give me a uh, or somebody give me a uh, thumbs up. No. Okay, you got me. All right, thank you very much. All right. All right, so sorry for the for the technical difficulties there. All right. All right, so uh, what happened is my phone right here, which I was recording the my phone and my the computer, it, it all went to sleep right when I was cleaning it up. And I wasn't paying attention. All right, cool, cool. All right, we'll take care of questions then. All right, so you saw there that was the that was the 3d puff the cleaning part which to me is the most important part that's like 60 percent of the actual work right there all right i mean when you get to that point that's 60 percent that 40 percent is cleaning it up and the more the 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 better the digitizing the easier it is to clean all right so when you get to that point once you get to that point let, let me open up this window Light right here. All right. So once once we get to that point of cleaning up with the, the 3D puff, all right, it should that should be the easy part, but we can't celebrate yet, right? We gotta actually we gotta do the, the heavy lifting of cleaning up. All right, so all right, Audrey, appreciate that. Good looking out. Uh let's let's start from, from the top, all right. So I see the messages where I see the messages where my audio went out. Hopefully you were still seeing, you could still see what I was doing. Okay, I think the GoPro was still going on. All right, so. All right, uh, youngster, I used the Gen 2 hat hoop for the dad hats and non-structure hat. It holds the cap better than the standard cap. Kind of, but you can still use it for non-structure hat. Yeah, that's, I, I bought the Gen 2 like a couple years ago. And I, I don't even know where my regular hoops are at. All right. Uh, yeah, Jeanette never thought of using a heat gun. Yeah, it's like mandatory. Like uh, 3D puff, you have to have to use. Uh, you have to use a uh, heat gun. Okay, you could ask. You could also use a lighter. Lighters work. All right, but heat gun is just common because the heat gun and the 3D puff that that puff right that foam it just naturally uh, becomes one with the thread. All right, when you heat it up, okay, so it becomes real good. All right. Um, mm, let's see. Uh, body, body, body. That's a lot of cleanup. This is why 3D puff is expensive. Most of the hats that lids are puff from brand. They run about, yep. 
Yeah, yeah. Usually a hat should easily cost uh 35 45 bucks easily all right well a good one right good good design and all that um it is a lot of cleanup but really when when, when you're doing a project right when you're in the flow and you're just cleaning up the caps really like the the end caps of your digitizing i wouldn't say it's, it's extensive i think there's other types of projects that maybe might be more uh cleanup type uh intense okay it ain't that bad like I, I just cleaned it up with the gopro in front of me kind of at a awkward angle that i was at all right it's not too bad cleaning up all right um and then barb uh do you use a heat gun on the phone to shrink this yeah yeah so those little fuzzy pieces that were sticking out um those little fuzzy pieces that were sticking out they they kind of just kind of disappear so even here now, one thing about um, puff, I the best puff to have, I like these type of projects, is black on black. So black design with black puff, okay, that'll be the easiest thing to clean, uh, easiest day ever that you had. All right. All right, hold on. Let me go all the way up. We, ha we did have a lot of questions. Uh, oh, I mean, he has to. All right. This is a good question. How many hats do I have to destroy until I learn this? Uh, it depends how many, the, the difficulty of your design. Usually it should be straightforward. All right, usually. But when I started, my first design was very difficult. I had one of the most difficult. I, at that time, I didn't know it was one of the most difficult designs I could ever get. I went, I went 20 hats before we got it correct. Okay. Then we moved on to the next level. Then I used another 20 hats on another project. All right, so it's it's you got to learn by just messing up. So, all right. Um, let's see, Audrey. If you ever go, if you ever go to a show, you will see a company doing eight caps at once, and they just sit the puff on top of the hats. Yeah. So usually, uh, you know uh, the size of the design. If you know where the placement's at and the design, then you could kind of eyeball where it goes. All right. Uh, all right, Melissa, uh, Marisa, thank you for the free file for the puff. I've learned a lot from in a short time. All right, yeah. So it's gonna be up for download. Just give me a a couple minutes to um, to load it up. I'm just gonna verify that everything's good to go. All right, and then if there's a uh, a certain file that your machine uses that I didn't save it on, just let me know. Right, message me, and I'll, and I'll do. All right, uh, Jeanette. I see that 3D puff is done a lot on structured. Have you done them on unstructured hats? Wondering how you would hoop it. Uh, same way. Uh, so I would hoop it the same way as any other hat with the with the Gen 2 or 3D puff just done on unstructured. No, no, it's 3D puff, all right? It's all day structured, unstructured, okay? It's just the only difference is unstructured, you wanna use two pieces of tearaway and unstructured, I use one piece of tearaway. Some people don't even use tearaway, but I like to use tearaway no matter what, All right? Same process, same process. There's no difference in process. The only difference that we have is unstructured, we use two pieces of tearaway. Structured, one piece of tearaway. That's the only difference. All right. Uh, now, with the Gen 2, okay, with the Gen 2, that's why I'm a big fan of it because it has a three point holding system. So it holds it in three locations and it holds that dad hat real good. Okay, I used to have a, a lot of problems with, uh, I used to have a lot of problems with dad hats. All right, and uh, the Gen 2 kind of takes care of a lot of that stuff. All right, hold on. Uh, let me see, you go through here. Oh, yeah, that's what happened right here. The battery was out and <laughs> my phone died. As you can see, it's right here. All right, so I had to go to backup GoPro right here. Um, all right, thank you. Uh, beautiful. All right, yeah, the hat came out nice. All right, appreciate that. Uh, yep, and this is it right here, Audrey. The heat gun wraps everything up nicely, right? Everything just it's like shrink wrap, right? When you use the 
when you're shipping, like using heat uh, shrink wrap and you use that heat gun, everything kind of comes together. All right. Uh, Nino, nice work. All right. Yeah, came out nice. Thanks. All right. Bam, bam, bam. All right. Yeah, yeah. All right. This is. Bam. Bar, appreciate that. Many gems of information given today. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, it's a lot of stuff. Even I'm telling you, even though you're not doing your own digitizing, it's stuff you have to know. So if, stuff, if something doesn't come right, you know if it's something that you can fix on your end or it's something you got to send back to the digitizer and kind of tell them to adjust their stuff. All right. But a lot of stuff, as long as the digitizer did like the heavy lifting, you can just come in and do a little fine tweaking. Okay. And sometimes it's just from hat to hat. Like one hat might stitch out perfect, but you change a couple of settings or a, a couple of um, different styles of hats, and now it requires you to do a little changes. All right. Um, and then where can I buy a heat gun? Uh, anywhere. Uh, any um, Home Depot, Lowe's, or wherever um, they sell like building equipment, like to build stuff, like house improvement stuff. Uh, and then what kind of hats? is the best for puff any hat if it's a hat you could put puff on it all right uh of course preferably structured hat just because it's a little bit more firm okay i think it's it's preferable but you could easily do it on that hat all right and then um female hustle with ink with z how exciting i'll try it yeah you definitely if you have especially if you have an empty 1501 you gotta do hat all right, like that, that 1501 is created for hats. All right, and then uh, the Vite, appreciate you this morning. Good afternoon, professor, not the day of class, nor not the day of class. Thank you for all, uh, appreciate that. All right, and, and then we got a question here. All right, Marisa, when we stitch it out, do we still go from center to left to right? Yeah, so you, you, you could, um, you always replay it, right? You always replay it, see how it's gonna stitch out, just so you know what to expect. Okay. But usually, yeah, foam, you want it to be center out. Okay. So it doesn't matter if it's center to left or center to right. You just want it to be center out. Okay. You could go from center to left and then to right or vice versa. Okay. So that that really doesn't matter. All right. And then uh we got Paragon. Good morning. Okay. And then, yeah, that's fine. If you're late, okay, we got we got this on the replay. So uh, definitely see it on the replay. And then uh, where else can, can Puff be used? Left chest, I wouldn't recommend it on clothing. I would, I would recommend it on hats and backpacks. Okay. You definitely don't want to do it on something that's going to wash. It might not hold on too long. Okay. Uh, you could try it. I, I, I don't really, I wouldn't like uh, Puff on left chest. I like just nice, clean, flat on left chest. And then, okay, very good question. Do you use titanium needles for the 3D puff hat? Definitely. Okay, definitely. But it's not mandatory. Okay, it's not mandatory. Uh, I'm pretty sure I have some needles there where it's just 7511. Okay. 7511 sharp, you're good with that. You put titanium, that's even better, especially for a big project. Now, if you're going to do a big, big project, uh, I would say anywhere from like 12, 24, 36 hats. You're just going to go constant, constant on the same needle. Okay. You might want to go titanium because uh, now you're you know, you're adding a lot of heat, a lot of friction. Uh, you want it just to go through, right, without no problem. All right. Um, uh, Marlene, appreciate that. Thank you. And then uh, Lejean, we got brother PS file format. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Got it. Yes, yeah, very popular um, brand, okay, or popular um, one to, to save it on. Yeah, usually I save it at PES. All right, cool, cool. All right, so we did go uh, two hours today, so we did have a good, good day of training, okay? Even though we had the audio issue, I'm pretty sure that the GoPro was still running, right, w without the volume. You just didn't hear, you just didn't hear me, uh, Ramble went while I was uh, when I was cleaning it. All right, but as what I was trying to say when I was cleaning it, 
I was really just pushing in that foam on the caps. Everything else, all the sand stitches, it all came out clean, right? Sometimes you'll see it, something sticking out, and you saw me use the, the, the seam ripper, all right? Easily push that in, okay? Of course, I'm not, I'm not kind of adding so much pressure, okay? I'm not going through the foam, or I'm just kind of lightly, okay? Lightly pushing it in, pushing everything nice and tucked in, because I know, I know once I hit that heat gun, that, that foam is going to like pull itself in. Stitches are going to kind of go over it. All right. And then if you want to add an extra layer of, of uh, cleanness, you could always uh, use a lighter. Okay. But the thing with the lighter, make sure it's like a darker type thread. You don't want to use the lighter on like a, a white thread. Okay. Because then it might burn it. All right. And then uh, appreciate that, Linda Woods, right? Really appreciate cl your classes. Yep, so this is uh, week 10 right now. We're in week 10. I really feel like we've been building a good uh, foundation so far, okay? In these 10 weeks, I, I feel like we have a good, strong foundation. And now we're gonna start taking it up a notch, all right? So now if we talk about 3D Puff, right? I don't have to start from ground zero because we got this information now, right? So now we're gonna build up and we're going to get into the more um, the more detailed, the more uh, advanced type stuff, all right, as we go. Um, and then if anybody is uh, joining us on the replay, okay, the, the videos are always there available. And um, any questions that you have, you can leave them down below. And I'm constantly uh, monitoring uh, the YouTube. The, it's easier for me to answer questions on a YouTube comment, okay, than it is. Uh, email or any because email and just direct messages kind of get lost in the mix. All right. Yeah, like this one here, I kind of like monitor. It's easier to monitor. All right. So make sure you leave all your questions. And and if you if you posted questions today, all right, thank you because you're helping anybody that's catching it on the replay that didn't have and didn't have a chance to ask a question. You kind of like that. You're kind of looking out for that. And then um, Janet, Janet, did the uh, heat gun used to clean up the threads too? Uh, not not really the threads. It, it does flan, It does clean. I wouldn't say it cleans up the thread. It kind of makes the foam and the thread kind of come together a little better. Can't hear. Let's see what happened. You can't hear me. All right, let me know when you can hear me. Uh, check, check. Can you hear me? Um, you mic. That stream. Uh. All right, now you can hear me. All right, sorry about that. <laughs> I know this, I got all these inputs like cameras, so I gotta figure out where the audio is coming from. All right, all right, so I think, uh, all right, I think we're good. All right, so we hit that two hour mark. All right, appreciate everybody for stopping by. Um, if you have any uh, ideas or if you have any, uh, uh, yeah, ideas, for uh, future topics, just leave them in the comments also. Uh, that way, uh, either I make a class on that topic or I just kind of um, include it into a certain topic. All right. So I want to thank everybody for stopping by. We'll do this all over again next week and every week this whole year. All right. So it's every uh, Saturday morning, 8, 8 a.m. Central, 6 a.m. Pacific, 9 a.m. Eastern. All right. So till the next time, peace out.